Hello and welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, Lori Hintz. Yes, I am. We are happy to be with you this Friday evening. And Lori, you're going to be doing the heavy lifting on tonight's show. I'm oh, just wow. saying. Okay, good to know. But I'm, I'm here. I'm here Got with you. Got my power suit on. This is my favorite color. Right. Anybody who knows me knows that I love me some periwinkle blue, so it's my favorite. That, I would call that periwinkle, actually, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first topic that we're going to talk about today is some wins for religious freedom. Now, religious freedom, <laughs> well, religion in, in um, all aspects has been actually under fire more and more and more recently, but it's nice to see some actual wins for a change for religious freedom. Mm -hmm. And the first case that we were talking about comes from an article in The Federalist. Now, the article talks about the uh, the possibilities of some actual wins in various uh, places. There are three of them in, in this article in particular. And what happened was the Department of Human Services and Human Services Office of Civil Rights, or the OCR, announced that it had secured access for religious clergy in New York's Mount Sinai health system, even during the COVID-19 pandemic. The resolution followed a religious discrimination complaint it was from a Jewish organization that claimed that the hospital prohibited spiritual leaders' access to patients. So that was the first ruling. The second case involved, um, in the second case, it involved Joe Biden's pro-abortion HHS nominee, Xavier Becerra. You may have heard of this guy before. Mm, and if so, uh, HHS announced that it would refuse California 200 million of federal Medicaid funding for forcing insurance companies and employers, including an order of nuns, to pay for abortion without exclusion or limitation, which is unconscionable to make anybody yeah. pay for abortions when they are morally opposed to it. Yep. That's horrible. So yeah, that, that, was, was, that, was, uh, that, was, that was a big one. That was a big one, too. And then um, the third one was with the University of Vermont Medical Center, where a nurse was forced to help perform an abortion against the nurse's conscience-based objections. What a horrible situation for her to be in in that situation. But because UVMMC had not changed its policies to prevent any future coercion, the case was referred to the Department of Justice. And uh, they will sue that uh, center, that medical center in Vermont, for HHS for enforcement. But so she was suing because she was being coerced? Going to coerced. Do it. Did, did, yep. did she do it? She or? was forced to help perform an abortion against her objections. Hmm. Which is a really weird situation. I'm not sure I, about that I'm one. I'm not either. Because you, you'd say, well, I'm not going to do it. Go ahead and fire me, and then I'll sue you. Right, right. But so, anyway, it's still good. It is good. So those are the, those are the main stories, and I, I know how many times we hear about various religious institutions, especially with COVID right now. Churches are being shuttered. I mean, they are mm -hmm. being closed. There, there's one Colorado church. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know about the, the uh, Catholic Diocese in Brooklyn. Right. Um, with Cuomo, right. and the Supreme Court ruled, and th that was, some of it is important because of just on its face what it is, is saying you're discriminating against a church based on the congregation when you allow more people for other activities. Exactly. And so Cuomo said, you don't need to take this up because I already pulled back. And the Supreme Court actually said, you know what, we're going to still take it up <laughs> because these people have put in their time and money to get it to this level. Now you pull back. If we say no, you could just bring it back again, and then they have to start over. So kudos to the Supreme Court. They said, no, we're still going to take it up. And yes, you're wrong. We uh, f uh, find favor with the uh, plaintiffs. Interestingly so, to me, it's, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, it, it follows, though, Colorado right. had a very similar lawsuit. And what happened is that Colorado pulled back on its mandates when the decision came down with the Supreme Court for New York. So in the Colorado court, instead of saying, well, we don't have to look at it, what they said is, you know what, we, it's, we're not going to just say we don't need to address it because you pulled back. We're going to put it back down to the district court and have them change their ruling, which in effect then doubles down on supporting the idea that it is discriminatory to not allow church congregations to gather when you're allowing other people. Uh, there so are many, many people who believe that churches are essential. Yeah. I mean, they just, they just are. They're essential. And especially in a time of COVID where people are despairing and they're looking for hope and they're looking for something 
to which to boost their mental <laughs> um, state. I mean, it's, it's so depressing sometimes. And it's just, it seems very, very cruel to me that churches would not be able to be right. open. So, and church or no church, the problem is that it's not equal treatment under the correct. law. Correct. And so you can't say that, well, gosh, because I'm uh, governor so-and-so and that church isn't important to me, so therefore no one else can gather in a church. But, you know, Walmart's important to me so people can gather in a Walmart. You know, that, that, that. Disparity. Um, exactly. That disparity, that uneven application of the law is the, is the big thing. And in this particular case, it was the churches that were being um, restricted unfairly. So I'm glad, I'm really glad that, that it came out this way. With these cases too, I was very happy to see particularly that the nuns were protected. I mean, the little sisters were always being, uh, you know, singled out and they were terribly wronged. And that, to me, the fact that the courts are finally seemingly going the other way is a huge bellwether for what's happening in the future. I'm hoping. Right. I think that may very well be uh, Trump's biggest legacy. And of course, we knew that uh, going in uh, with Trump from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we knew that um, I, I think we, it, it was probably one of the biggest trains of thought when he was running against Clinton is what will happen to the Supreme Court. And uh, so he, he was true to what he said. Uh, and like so many things that Trump said, you know, for I took it with a grain of salt. And it turns out that he held true to what he said, and, and thankfully so. Yeah, I, I concur absolutely on that too. So we shall see if this is a trend or if it is not a trend, but I was very, very um, excited. California losing 200 million in Medicaid funds for, <laughs> for forcing insurance. That was, a, that was a biggie too, and it turned out that it was talking about 200 million of federal Medicaid funding for forcing insurance companies and employers, including order of nuns to pay for abortion. And they said that that was going to be 200 million per each quarter that California did not comply. Mm. That was an incentive. There's, that was a little bit of a monetary there's incentive. There's a big stick. Yeah. yeah so I, I love that. I think that's a, it's a really big deal. And I look at these lawsuits as deterrence for future onerous um, use of whatever law it is against religious institutions or those people who of conscience do not want to have anything with abortion. And they, if they don't want to do abortion, and that nurse is really, that's an interesting story. I would love to delve deeper into that and find out exactly what she did uh, in, you know, the situation. What do you do? Right. I mean. It's a tough one. It's. Yeah, I, so it would be no, good to know the rest of the story and uh, what took place and in what manner was she coerced? Was it th threat of, of job security? Right. Probably. Right. Um, so yeah, these this these set the precedent, mm -hmm. and with COVID, whether, whatever's going on with COVID, whatever the curves are going to be, and they seem to be going up in some states, who knows what additional restrictions are going to be put in place? So as these things come down through the courts, that that kind of is the line in the sand right. to the governors those governors that exceed their authority in putting these types of mandates in place, these restrictions in place, like, don't do it. It's just going to go to the court. You're going to lose again. Yep. You're going to be the fool again. And at what point do churches completely open up? I mean, I just keep waiting for things to finally open up, and it's just not happening. I mean, it seems like we're on a downslide, so does that mean that, I mean, what's the fear? How long do you hold the line on these churches, and how long do you drag it out until church members can't be well, together. And, and the church and each, each congregation or each uh, pastor or priest or what have you is going to have to make a, determined based on, a ter determination based on what he thinks his congregation wants. You know, right. if, if it happens to be a congregation that leans to be more elderly, perhaps opening up isn't going to change anything because they don't feel comfortable. It's going to have to be, and that's the whole point of all of this. It should be left up to the individual, exactly. to the organization, in this case to the congregation, 100%. And, and, and keep government out of it. Keep yep. these heavy-handed governors out of it. I agree. I agree. Well, religious freedom wins, and um, we will keep an eye on that and see if there are any more that are coming down the pike that are also in favor of religious freedom. I hope that that's the case but we'll find out soon. Yes. So on our next segment, we are going to bring in here a guest. And nice name tag you got there, too. Not going to lie. He's got a really cool yes. name tag. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back with our guest.
Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Hi, I'm Dennis Hogan, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. For the greatest selection and full menu offering is the Four Season Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor in Garrison. Succulent sandwiches, big breakfast served all day, and delicious desserts. Easy access in and out for campers and RVs. The Four Season Restaurant at the top of Main Street, Garrison. Are you a thrill seeker, sightseer, or day tripper? The Ford Bronco Sport SUV is built for you. Four Bears Casino is giving away a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport loaded with a ton of interior space, safari style roof, smooth suspension for any terrain, and easy to clean surfaces. Qualify now just by playing your favorite slots at Four Bears Casino. Double points on Sundays. Also get in on Super Senior Wednesdays, slot turning Thursdays, and hot seats on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Spin into Four Bears Casino and Lodge for chances to win. Some things in life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. As you can see, we have a guest with us, somebody that Lori and I are extremely happy to have. We're fond of him. Reed Christensen. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> Reed and I have gone back quite a ways, at least in my legislative career. Uh, you were the page in the 2013 session, 2015. right? 2015. 15 session. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's right, because that's when I moved to the side. So, so I was sitting at the very end of one of the rows, and um, and so Reed was a page. Explain what a page is. Well, you run papers around. You kind of do the gopher work for a session, and I had long hair at this point, so it's down mm -hmm. to my shoulder blades, I think. Uh, yeah, it was, I it was very it. distracting. <laughs> <laughs> very distracting. You clean up nice. You clean thank up you, nicely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you uh, were right next to me. We ended up chatting quite a bit, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I gave you Bastiat's Law. Yep, read that. Yep. Uh, Read everything I could get my hands on, I guess. I was in college at that point, so I was able to do you know, my classwork, read what I needed to, and then do online after that, but great yeah. experience. Yeah, so. it was. You are a good page, too. So those who do not know, Reed has had a very prolific career as a young Republican, and the, the name tag that Rick is wearing today, I already had one of those, just saying. Uh, so he got his tonight, but we honestly, love the young Republicans, both probably Rick and I. Um, you were there last year for the convention, as was mm -hmm. I, I was invited, which is funny because neither of us are young. We are Republican, but neither of us are young Republicans, but we were both mm -hmm. invited to the Young Republicans convention. And I went so excited to go, and it was wonderful. And then I went this year, you didn't get to go this year, but it was 
fantastic this year as always. So the Young Republicans are a very prolific group here in North Dakota. And the Young Republicans were led by you. For, since, well, tell me a little bit about your history with them. Oh boy, well, where do you start? Well, I guess tying in with what Rick said, uh, I was on his campaign uh, when he ran for governor. And, uh, 2016. Yeah, 2016, ran around the state uh, doing all sorts of events. Well, I came back for session, and that time I was the calendar clerk. So I worked uh, the front desk, got to run, you know, kind of the calendar there. Uh, you know, was able to learn even more there than as a page. Uh, so then 2017 rolls around, and we hear this organization, the Young Republicans, is being started. And so uh, Jared and Caleb, both of which, you know, Jared was on your campaign, and then Caleb Melhoff, who helped out, uh, said, hey, Reed, let's, uh, let's run for some stuff in this, uh, in this uh, new organization. New or new organization. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll help assemble the team. So, you know, we started making calls and getting friends together. I had really no idea what, <laughs> what to expect or what we were getting in the middle of. But, uh, yeah, we showed up at the, the state party headquarters with about 90 young people that uh, just tons of energy. I got elected chairman, uh, and that's a bit of a story how I got there. So. It, yeah, and that's I, incredible. Basically, I get elected. People, I mean, it, it may not sound like a lot to, to viewers, but that's a lot if of you're, people. If you've been involved in politics, you're trying to organize something. To have 90 people at all is is a feat. Let alone to have 90 new, eager, excited, hardworking young individuals. That's fantastic. That's amazing. It really is. It's ridiculous. Well. So then I, wanna, I want you to talk about some of your accomplishments because I know what they are and I know it's, it's not as easy for you to brag about them, so I'm just gonna feed you some, all right? Okay, all right. So first of all, you got, in, you, got, you got involved in the election of Kevin Kramer. Yeah, that was, that was an amazing experience, just front to back, kind of the whole story of how Kevin got involved because originally he didn't want to run for Senate, you know, so he was gonna run for Congress right. again and so Jared was his campaign manager and then through shuffling, I was like just basically helping coordinate volunteers for Kevin. Remember at the convention, yep. get all those people behind him. Yep. So just being kind of in the background, helping with a lot of that, that was my introduction. But you took a group of kids. I'm sorry, I'm just going to call y'all well, kids. Yeah, yeah. But when you were in Grand Forks, you went and you got so busy in that community, which was not necessarily the most conservative area. I mean, it's kind of purpley in Grand Forks sometimes, but you managed to completely flipped that whole... Well, it was a lot to do with Michael, Michael Kelsch, who mm -hmm. I know we... I know we, him well also. Yeah, so he, he was the machine up there, and it's... it's another young Republican. Another young Republican, but it's unbelievable what we were able to accomplish. I mean, thousands of voter contacts, tens of thousands of voter contacts, and, you know, we led the, we led the nation in 2018 in a volunteer-led voter contact, 60%. 60% of the voter contacts we made for Kevin Kramer were volunteer-led. Mm. That's phenomenal. It is. It was fantastic. And it, it flipped a Senate seat in the U.S. Senate and the huge ramifications for our state, but also for the nation. So really, really important work. Some of my favorite pictures are you and me side by side. I got my American flag sunglasses on and we're We're smiling. walking in the parade, yeah, the, right? The Mandan Fourth of July yep. parade. That was just what a blast. Exactly. <laughs> so you, you mobilize these guys and gals of young Republicans and you get them busy. Now, fast forward to this year in 2020, you did a whole nother fantastic thing. And I know this because I have a letter from the National Committee woman from Minnesota to me talking about how grateful she was for the help of the North Dakota Young Republican in Minnesota. So you didn't just do North Dakota this time. No. You went somewhere where you were really needed in Minnesota and made a humongous difference. Now the background is, is that Colin Peterson had this this uh, house seat in Minnesota in CD7 forever, like decades. And you all went down there. I got to join you only once, but I'm telling you, it was a great experience door knocking in Minnesota. Well, you know, we, we had some great contacts down there. You know, you know Megan Plotz, uh, Kelvin Benson, you know, JP, JP Peterson, you know, all these guys that were there on the ground already who we just kind of was like, okay, point us in the right direction. And so we would go out, we'd take our walk books and we'd hit, you know, Hundreds of thousands of doors. And hundreds of thousands well, of doors. Well, hundreds and thousands, <laughs> not hundreds of thousands. <laughs> well, it's true, though. And uh, explain what a walkbook is, because people may not even know what you're even talking about. I know what a walkbook is, but may people may not know. So, yeah, you, you get your smartphone, which all young, everyone young has a smartphone. They can usually maneuver an app pretty well. And so, uh, it's, you know, 
you go in there, you hit a house, you go to that address, you put in, you know, take a survey of the person if they answer the door. If they don't answer the door, you leave a flyer. Uh, that's kind of the nuts and that's his ground level. As so you can. slick, though, technologically to be able to know exactly where to go, exactly mm -hmm. the right houses, and then be able to log that so that people can have a record of where you've, oh, where you've gone. Yes. And it's so huge, efficient. Huge. So you took people from young Republicans from North Dakota weekend after weekend. What, five weekends did you? Yeah, about that, yep. And look at what happened. Michelle Fishbach got elected amazingly against yeah. Colin Peterson, the perennial. So that was a huge, huge coup. Yeah. Fun Fantastic to be a part work. of it. Fun Fantastic work, Reed. Fun to be a part it's of just it. one thing after another after another. I don't know. You should go over to the Middle East and solve the issues there. <laughs> Perhaps Kim Jong-un. I don't know. Uh, also, you also, and we're going to, I don't know if we're going to have enough time in this segment. We may have to carry you over here, too. But I understand that you also were awarded something, too. So we'll have to talk about that in, right, in, yeah. in just a second when we come back on that one, too. But uh, talk just a little bit really quick, um, maybe 30 seconds, about uh, going to Wyoming. So, yeah, we have these quarterly meetings with the Young Republican National Federation. And so uh, Wyoming was where our last quarterly meeting was. And go, you know, I stayed with the Minnesota delegation, and we'd go on these adventures in the morning, you know, and have, you know, we'd climb up in the mountains, and it was snowing, and when, all this sort of fun when stuff. When we come back, we're going to, we're going to find out what happened in Wyoming with his award. We'll be right back. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. In southwestern and south central North Dakota, on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. My wife was diagnosed with uh, early stage Alzheimer's. We talked about it and we kind of decided we'd be a little bit proactive and try to start making provisions. So we started looking here and uh, even title worked out to be pretty much the perfect answer. I guess I, I didn't expect it to be so nice. The staff here were terrific. We enjoy it. They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. back to No Apologies on Beck. We are still here with Reed Christensen, the amazing, incomparable Mr. Christensen. How are you, sir? We're fans, not going to lie. 
What can I say? Reed, well, I have a, oh, I have a, an email here. Uh oh. Yeah, someone's asking if you're single. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> Okay. That'd be a yes. Okay, so we were talking about uh, your convention that happened in Wyoming. Now. Yeah, yeah, so quarterly meetings. So I was, you know, we got back from our adventure. Um, you know, we were up in the mountains. We had, you know, a few issues with the vehicle. Anyway, got back <laughs> down. We were a little late, so I had my stocking hat on. You know, I just walked in like, you know, usually, like I'm usually dressed, you know, with a uh, jacket and, you know, hoodie and everything. So right, anyway. Right, right. Well, Rick starts naming off these people. So Rick Lockery. Rick meaning Lockery. Lockery. Okay. He's the national chairman of the Young Republicans. And so uh, he started, you know, called the meeting to order uh, just as I was getting there. And, uh, you know, it starts calling people the front that he was recognizing for certain things. And, and you know, talking about, you know, how they uh, worked hard at this, or, you know, planned this event, you know, knocked so many doors, whatever. And I'm just, you know, sitting there. Well, then my name gets called. What? Wait, what? <laughs> and I'm like, look around. And I'm like, well, I guess that's me. So I get up there. And yeah, I got I got uh, recognized uh, the, and added to the chairman's uh, distinguished order, um, which you know I got this little pin. I didn't wear it tonight, but you know I got I got a pin. We've got yeah. a picture of it so that oh. you can see how fancy it is. That is super cool. That is a very elite group, is it not? Well, there's not many of it. It's, uh, <laughs> it was an honor. I was, I was really honored to be there. And why did they give that to you? Well, do you think? Above and beyond with Michelle Fishbach in, in Western Minnesota and, mm -hmm. and stepping up, I guess, for three years. So, Well, we're grateful for all that the Young Republicans have done. Now, if you are, um, say, a parent of a 20-something, and Young Republicans have a specific age group, too. You want to explain the difference between yeah, college so, Republicans and Young Republicans? So it's 18 to 40 years old. That's, that's our age, you know, dues-paying uh, membership. Uh, we help charter uh, high school Republicans. So we can get younger kids involved with that. Uh, and then, you know, obviously if people want to come and help and, and donate or, or, you know, knock doors, volunteer, whatever. Do you have a website? Yeah, ndyr.org. ndyr.org. Mm -hmm. And also you have a very prolific Facebook page with yeah. lots of information on yep. there. Uh, we had you guys stream that when uh, we did that rally that for was Trump, amazing. which was really, really fun. And I know it's been viewed like 19,200 times. It's like amazing yep. amount of people. Okay, so people who would like to get involved with the Young Republicans, yep. what's your suggestion to them? Well, first of all, I'm former chair, so get in touch with Daryl. That's Darryl right, Daryl Mindeman. He's, he's the, the new chairman, mm -hmm. and he will do a fantastic job. He's been essential to the organization since, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's a numbers guy. He's a details guy. He's really, you know, I'd, I'd go to him and I'd be like, okay, Daryl, I want to do this. How can we get it done? And he'd make it happen. So, you know, Daryl's Daryl's going to do fantastic as chairman, and and uh, which leads me kind of to the next thing. So, I knew I, I pretty much knew I wasn't going to run a year ago for re-election, and so um, I do stuff in the background. I do stuff without a lot of recognition. That's why I, get, I haven't stopped smiling since walking in <laughs> here. You know, this is just I, it's fun. It's, it's beyond what I was expecting, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, <laughs> I just, I knew it was probably time for someone else to step up and, and I can kind of, you know, ride off into the sunset. Well, before I could ride off into the sunset, uh, I did get an appointment. Uh, you did? So, yeah. And so um, the Young Republican National Federation, they have these different committees. And so, uh, you know, because of my work on my brother's campaign, because of this work with Michelle Fishbach, you know, running stuff, being involved, Rick's campaign, all this stuff, Kevin's campaign, uh, I've been... Yeah, appointed as national campaign chairman uh, of the committee for the Young Republican National Federation. Wow, wow. nice! So, That's a national post. Congratulations! Yep. Yep. So, is this the first time you are announcing this? Yes, this is the first oh, public neat. announcement. Nice. Nice. That's so, great! Yeah. Good congratulations! Yep. That is it going to mean some travel? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing so. Yeah, <laughs> organizing and kind of doing what I did in North Dakota. You know, help if people wanted to run. You know, telling them you know. Here, do this, set this up, get this, you know, in place. And so doing that at a national level, I think it's an amazing opportunity. It's, like it's funny how that timing Good was, too. You. I know. Well, I, I didn't plan on that. It's not like I was, oh, yeah, I'm going to something bigger. It just got as his well, way you're, of You're going to do steps. great at it. No, there's no doubt about it. You will excel. No um, question. That's, it's, it sounds like it's, it's made for you. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have every confidence. Thank you. You're going to do fantastic. You got some cheerleaders here in the room. Oh, I so. know. It's, you guys are great. So. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, as you can tell, I'm wearing your favorite color. I know, yeah. I know. And I'm so excited about I have the name tag, too, and not going to lie, that was like the best thing ever. We had some fantastic speakers. Talk a little bit about um, some of your speakers at your convention. That uh, so, was so, okay. <clears throat> well, actually, our keynote and our first speaker was the same first guest you had on, oh. so Kelly Schmidt. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. she, yep. was our, she was our keynote for our last yep, convention, right. and you know, she's the outgoing state treasurer. Um, I happen to have been really close with her son. Mm -hmm. Before I knew, <clears throat> like when I was a page in the house, I was going to Bismarck State College, and we talked, Evan and I would talk football, and so like it just ha so happened that his mom was, you know, the state treasurer. Happened and, to be Kelly Schmidt. Right, right. yeah, Very and so cool. having her as a speaker, Kevin Kramer was a speaker. We had our national chairman, Rick Lockery, there, uh, and so he spoke. Um, I mean, you were there, obviously. You it spoke. was great. Yeah. It was just great fun. And I was honored to even be invited. I just love that so much, too. And you've had uh, other speakers come in, too. We can yeah, talk well, about Rick. Some. Rick was our keynote last year. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, uh, I've just been so impressed by the people that have stepped up and gotten involved and helped, you know, push this organization along. It's, mm -hmm. it's really been amazing to see, you know, Josh Gallion was our, our keynote, our first keynote, you know, mm -hmm. the first year. So it was just on down the line, all this stuff that's, that's been happening. It's really, uh, wow, how do you even put words <laughs> to it, you know? Right. <laughs> well, and you, you're at the center of it. I, I mean, that, that says something, right? It's not just that you're walking through it. This stuff, you're, you're in the center of it, which I think tells people probably a lot, and hopefully you recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and now you've got an, you've got an organization that's growing, mm -hmm. and you're building as you go along too. So uh, you can recruit easier using the television shows should help. And, and if people wanted to get in touch with young Republicans, or say they have a kid who is of age to be a young Republican, and they want to say, hey, listen, if you're interested in getting involved, these kids can do amazing things and really truly make a difference. What was your suggestion for that? So sign up on our website, ndyr.org. Okay. Get in touch with Daryl. His his number should be out there. If it's, if my number's still out there, then contact that, and I'll get you in touch with Daryl. So okay. Like His name is Daryl Mindeman, who's yep. the new. Talk about some of the other officers that you have in, in. Well, I mean, yeah, Caleb stepped up as treasurer, so that's big. Uh, we've got, you know, just the cast. So Rory Sompson coming in for secretary is very detail-oriented. And with our regions, you know, Damian Johnston, uh, Gwendolyn Rapoon in the Northeast, and then Brian Nordmark, who's been our policy director. Now, he, now Brian, he had some big shoes to fill with Raheem. Right. You know, Raheem moved out east, and so Brian's done a fantastic job filling those, you know, big shoes. So you've got regions too. Yep. So it's, this is not just one one big North Dakota group. Right. You've got different individual regions yep. that you can get together Correct. with too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an organization that just kind of took legs and did its own thing, and I was. I, Honestly, I was honored to be a part of it. What right? I like the best about the Young Republicans is they're not just talkers. They're not just meeting, meeting, meeting people. These people are doers. They're like, you know what? Let's go. Let's get in the car. Let's drive. Let's go. Let's do. Let's knock on some doors and use some energy. Let's make a difference. And I think I applaud you for motivating people to do that because it's yeah. had big, big dividends. The one thing I mentioned in my, my outgoing speech, we made 46 of the 47 district conventions, like where we had Young Republican representation. And that's in the state party. You know that that says something. When the young people are like, "Yeah, this matters. This matters to get involved." And and so, I was I was blown away by that. That yeah. is fantastic. Well, that's Reed, thank you so much for all thank that you. you have done. Best wishes on your new gig. That is exciting. Yeah, definitely. Very, we'll be watching very happy to, for you. to see you on a national scale now oh, at whatever. this point. Yeah. So, well, well, thank you so much for coming in and thank talking you. to it's us not, today. Hey, you guys are doing great. Keep it up. Keep <laughs> Thank, it up. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We are going to be back in a couple minutes with some brain food, one of our favorites. Stick with us. We'll see you in a couple. Howdy, folks. It's the Cantaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Cantaline Burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattle and pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. 
We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's Best Contractors, 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. For the greatest selection and full menu offering, it's the Four Season Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor in Garrison. Succulent sandwiches, big breakfast served all day, and delicious desserts. Easy access in and out for campers and RVs. The Four Season Restaurant at the top of Main Street, Garrison. Are you a thrill seeker, sightseer, or day tripper? The Ford Bronco Sport SUV is built for you. Four Bears Casino is giving away a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport loaded with a ton of interior space, safari style roof, smooth suspension for any terrain, and easy to clean surfaces. Qualify now just by playing your favorite slots at Four Bears Casino. Double points on Sundays. Also get in on Super Senior Wednesdays, slot turning Thursdays, and hot seats on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Spin into Four Bears Casino and Lodge for chances to win. things in life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. It is time for brain food. Brain food, nutrition for your brain. Some people call it trivia. We call it brain food. <laughs> we call it brain food. All right, to start off tonight, I just had a question. I was thinking to myself, okay, what has to do with Christmas? What can I tell? Oh, and I looked at my Christmas tree and I was looking at the lights and I thought, you know, I wonder who invented Christmas lights. And it really is really simple. It's not that hard. Hmm. Um, what Thomas Edison and Edward H. Johnson were the first. Now, Thomas Edison, of course, invented the light bulb, but then he actually also strung them together in strings of lights, come to find out, and started those electric strands of light in 1880 or 1882, I think. Um, it was Albert Sadaka who saw a future in selling Christmas lights. There's a difference between making them uh -huh. and then monetizing it and selling it. So this Albert Sadaka saw the future in Christmas lights and the Sadaka family owned a novelty lighting company in 1917 and Albert was a teenager at the time and he suggested that the store offer some brightly colored lights and put them on sale to the public. And so they started doing that. And by the 1920s, Albert and his brothers organized what they called the National Outfit Manufacturers Association, or NOMA, a trade association. And NOMA soon became known as NOMA Electric Company with its members uh, cornering the Christmas light market. They completely cornered the market until the 1960s. So for 40 years, this mm. group totally sold the Christmas lights until it went to other folks. But I thought that was an interesting hmm. thing. As a teen, he Noma. decided. Noma. Noma Christmas lights. Noma Christmas That's lights. That's what I say when my wife wants me to put no Christmas. More. Noma Christmas lights. <laughs> right, right. So that is the story of who invented Christmas lights and who monetized them. All right. Well, I have something that might be just a little bit more intellectual ah. than Christmas lights. Okay. So... One of my favorite people, he's probably one of my favorite people because no one seems to know about him, but, but he's also one of my favorite because he is so fun to read. Okay. And uh, I found out about him when I was reading a book called The Conservative Mind by Russell Kirk. It was written about 1942, something like that. Um, but anyway, long story short, this guy's name was just sort of in passing in one little sentence, and I was intrigued by why he was mentioned. And this person is Henry St. John, Lord Viscount Bolingbroke. 
glory. Yes, bro. there he is. Wow, in, in all, all his, his glory. glory. In yes, his indeed. Resplendent glory. <laughs> That's a good vocabulary. You're word. welcome. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm I'm more fond of the pictures of him without a wig, <laughs> but he was a character. So you know I like characters. Well, I can pretty much see that by his photo right yes. here. Yes. So, so he he was born in uh, 1678, died in 1751. He was a very early conservative political theorist. Really? Yes, he uh, was more on the Tory side okay. versus the Whigs. And uh, he was an advisor to kings and so forth. But then he got a little disgruntled. He went over to France. And he went with the, the uh, great pretender of the Stuart family, opposed the king. So he was kind of ostracized, and he came back. Anyway. He wrote, he wrote several little things uh, in the 1730s and 40s. One of them is called the, um, uh, On the Idea of a Patriot King. Ooh. So in essence, what he wrote was this lengthy letter to his king on the best way to rule. And he carried into that, it's, it's so interesting, because it's kind of like what we think of as, as small government, uh, limited government, big freedom, strong on liberty. But he puts that into a monarchy on how the king should rule. Fascinating read. The other one is uh, Letters on the Spirit of Patriotism. Hmm. Again, fascinating because you can take some of the stuff that he was writing about in the 1730s and apply it today. Uh, fascinating read. If anyone is, is, wants to nerd out on early <laughs> writing on conservatism, limited government, uh, Bolingbroke, B-R-O-K-E, B -R -O -K -E, Bolingbroke. So Henry St. John, first discount, B-O-L-I-N-G, Bolingbroke, B-R-O-K-E, Bolingbroke. That is he. Very cool. Very interesting stuff. Thank you for that. I love him. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Okay, so then we're going to pivot a little bit here next with a vocabulary word. We like to do this occasionally, you and I both. And so I picked a vocabulary word today, and my vocabulary word is misbegotten. Mm. Now, misbegotten means badly conceived, made, or carried out. It is hard to, not very hard to figure it out from the just the components in the word there too, but misbegotten is made of the prefix mis, or wrongly, or incorrectly, or like mistake, uh, from the Germanic prefix misa. And then uh, as Gothic, misadeth, and treasure, anyway. So then, uh, also then, beget is the compound a prefix b, or Germanic prefix meaning about, around, on all sides, or b. Uh, and then, of course, you've heard of begotten, so, uh, it's in the English, in the first half of the 16th century, in the sense it was illit illegitimate child, misbegotten. But in this case, it's an adjective that means ill-conceived hmm. or badly planned out. Interesting. Not well So planned. let me try and use your vocabulary word in a sentence. Okay. Uh-oh, I'm now officially worried. <laughs> so I would say that we have been adversely affected by Governor Burgum's misbegotten executive orders regarding COVID. Perfectly stated. Okay. Ill-conceived. My last one is okay. also a vocabulary word, and it is pusillanimous. 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 And I bring this word up. It's one of my favorites. Believe it or not, Henry St. John, Lord Viscount Bolingbroke, uses it several times in the two uh, uh, writings that I mentioned. Love it. Made, makes me giggle because um, it's a word that I, I liked even before him. Uh, it means showing a lack of courage or determination or being excessively timid. Timid. And I think that it is used, can be used very, very frequently in the world of politics, both on a national level as well as in our own state of North Dakota. Usillanimous. Usillanimous. And I love that because I'm a big fan of the word courage. Just this year, it seems like people lack courage. And I didn't really notice that too much until COVID occurred. And I realized, oh, wait a minute. It takes courage to walk into the grocery store without my mask. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to use courage. So, But hmm. it seems to me that the whole masking thing, and I know we bring this up all the time, but the, the fact of the matter is, is it makes people timid. It muzzles them. Mm -hmm. It makes them nervous when they're walking around. With, it, it's an amazing thing. I've seen the constant fear in people's eyes, and that really is troublesome to me because I feel like in America, we are all about courage. We're all about courage. We wouldn't be America if we weren't for courage. So the fact that courage is being squashed is really troublesome to me. Yeah, well, well said, well said.
So yeah, pusillanimous, courage, antonyms probably. Mm -hmm. And misbegotten, ill-conceived. You can remember that for, for future use. You can use that. I'm going to use that in my next rant <laughs> right? about my recurring topic. I, believe me, folks, I look forward to not being uh, a, a raving lunatic about, <laughs> about Burgum's executive orders. But I mean, we're living with them every day. So we'll eventually get past it. Believe me, I, I'm more than a one-trick pony. I've got maybe two tricks. Clever. Lots of tricks, I'm sure. So, OK. All right. <laughs> so that's brain food. I still feel a little bit hungry in, you know, in my brain, so maybe next time we're going to have to bring on our game even stronger. I think so, too. Oh, maybe even larger words. Six syllables. Gauntlet okay. thrown. Okay. All right. So that was Brain Food, and we are going to be coming back next with another interesting topic. I don't know. Leaving. Sometimes you just have to take your ball and go home. We'll find out about that next. <laughs> Teaser. Howdy folks, it's the Catalan Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Catalan burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. My wife was diagnosed with uh, early stage Alzheimer's. We talked about it and we kind of decided we'd be a little bit proactive and try to start making provisions. So we started looking here and uh, even title worked out to be pretty much the perfect answer. I guess I, I didn't expect it to be so nice. The staff here were terrific. We enjoy it. They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck, our last segment. Well, I kind of alluded to it in the tease there, but I was talking about people just grabbing their ball and going home. People just throw up their hands now and they just decide, okay, I'm out. <laughs> I know I've been there myself. But uh, we're, what we're talking about this segment is called secession. And it's not suck session. I've seen people mm, yep. inadvertently call it succeeding or suck, suck session, but it is Secession, S E S S S. As in seceding, seceding from the, the union. union. Right. So we're talking about this concept where a state or group of states breaks away from the United States proper, becomes its own 
information. Now, what brought this on? Well, frustration with elections, other uh, things previously, other years. I mean, it's been going on for a while that different states have talked about it, too. I've heard of California, for instance, for a number of years mm -hmm. has been talking about that. And now there's different, that's a very large state, and there's a lot of different people people in the state, and so there's areas of California that are thinking one way and other areas that are ready to like bye-bye. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an idea that's been around a long time, probably since the Civil War. Probably, that's a good point. <laughs> and uh, you know, I think to, if I were to take a little bit of a deeper dive on this topic, I think that a lot of it, maybe all of it, stems from the fact that the federal government centrally has gotten too much power, right. has taken too much power, and uh, has assumed power over the states, which, which were previously considered sovereign. Right. Um, but now we've got Washington running everything. All of the regulations are for all of the states. The education is being uniform. I mean, everything is being uniform. Everything is coming down from above. And so what we have then is decisions made at that central level affecting everyone equally instead of what it was supposed to be with 50 different states, right, laboratories of democracy, yep. where if you're a red state, something that was happening federally that might be more blue, you didn't care so much about because it didn't affect you like it does now. And conversely, the same is true. Is there a way to put the genie back in the bottle, though? Can the states reassert their sovereignty without seceding? I mean, that would be optimal, would it not, in the United oh, States, I would think, just yeah. being able to get your power back without having the central governor, government yes. you know, in charge I, of it. I think that's the key. I, I think secession is a bad idea, I, but I understand. And I don't, I don't think it's just, it has nothing to do, in my mind, with Trump. Or, you know, where four years ago, right. the, the progressives, the liberals were talking about secession, and now maybe some of the conservatives are talking about, it, it has nothing to do with that. It is all about power from above and not being happy with it such that you want to break free. Right. When in fact, if we followed the Constitution, you wouldn't need to feel that you needed to break free because you would already be sort of self-contained with minimal involvement centrally. So I do, I agree with you 100%. The idea is not to secede. The idea is to regain control on a state level. Mm -hmm. Consider the 10th Amendment as important as the first, the second, the fourth, and so on. Exactly. And what we need is for strong governors to come into play, to take control and say, this is how we're doing things. You need, at the same time, a president who respects the 10th Amendment um, and, and sort of gives up some of that power, the stranglehold, especially in the various agencies when you think about how they, they use the purse strings right. to control everything, exactly. everything that the Department of Transportation wants. Uh, it's implemented throughout the United States because of holding a little bit of the money. You either do what we want or you don't get the money. That's how they do everything. That's very, that's very, very true, too. So I know that in Texas, a state representative from the Hill Country in uh, central Texas wants to give Texas <laughs> the option to opt out of the United States. And they are given that option. They could do that. Uh, this Kyle Biedemann uh, from Fredericksburg told his supporters on Facebook that he plans to file a bill allowing for a referendum on secession. Mm -hmm. Texas, Texas can do that. They could totally, yeah. they could totally take their ball and go home. And, and I, I hate to see that. You don't want to see the United States uh, broken up like that. United kind of implies you're all in one group. Yeah. However, I understand it because people get just simply so frustrated. Yes, so. absolutely. Have you heard of Daxit? I have not. Haven't you? Isn't. Oh, is this the Dakotas yes. exiting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I have heard that, I guess. Yeah. Daxit is, uh, has been around for a few years. Mm -hmm. It came up, you know, right after. And uh, there was the Colexit, as you mentioned, with California. Yep, um, there's, there's a few of, of those. Um, but I'm not sure. I think, <laughs> I think it'd be more likely we would become Buffalo Commons, <laughs> right. which was proposed, what, in the 90s, right, I think, right, right. Then, um, then we would become Daxit. Daxit. Although we have a lot of opportunities in North Dakota. I mean, we have a pretty self-contained, we've got lots of you know, natural resources, we've got oh, lots yeah. of military, we've got, we, we have a lot of going for us. We could, we, we could do it all. And if we combined with South Dakota. Yeah, it would be better to combine with Montana, Idaho, and Washington so we'd have a seaport. That's true, good point. That's true, you need a seaport, you can't be landlocked, or, that would be troublesome. Or, instead of that, forget that, we don't want Washington. 
Okay, I take it back. <laughs> we do a we lot want Washington. we want South Dakota, Nebraska, whatever. Let's go Kansas. down to Texas yeah, yeah, and take yeah. the whole center of the country, and Oklahoma, then we can split. Texas. Hey, we could split the country that way. That'd be great. Uh, I no, like it. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I don't have much more on this except that it is a possibility, and uh, Colonel Allen West. I don't know her heard about this. Uh, Law-abiding states need to form a new union, and I got to meet. Uh, Alan West when mm -hmm. I was in North Carolina at the Charlotte Convention, and he's a really impressive person. Uh, he actually gave me a hard time about how cold it is in North Dakota, and I kind of called it, I didn't call him a wuss, but I kind of basically said, mm. dude. You called Adam West? I kind of did. I kind of did, because, it, well, he was complaining about how cold it is here. I said, why don't you come Alan visit West. North Dakota, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West? And yeah. he's like, it is too cold there. So. I have to work on that a little harder. I just explained to him that we just go from warm to warm, just like y'all do in Texas, going from cool to cool. It's the same concept. Mm. It's not that Interesting. hard. Anyway. Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, we, we should have a topic uh, come up sometime about um, the red and blue in the United States and why there's so much animosity. The source of this interest in secession, really even bigger than that, the source of our lack of ability to have civil discourse True. Because we can't say, well, you be, you do your thing and we'll do mine, because unfortunately we're all just jammed together because, again, of the excess power of the federal government. 100%. Uh, when we come back, we will, um, I know, when we go, when we come back um, with we'll our next back. show, I know, when we come back with our next show, we will have a guest to kick off Christmas week. So please come back and join us then. And next on Beck is No Filter with Debbie.